everyone. Welcome to the weekly, if I can make it, reach and teach show. This show on the Church Communications channel is all about uh, how we reach and teach people with the best news in the world, the news about Jesus. Last week on the podcast, I'm sorry, not the podcast, this is a show by video. Last week on the video, we did a little bit of a rant. I um, just was responding just to, you know, another story in the news that was about, you know, character problems in a Christian leader. And it was one of many, many stories. But this, and I was just in, trying to encourage you last week uh, that your character matters more than your competency. And I promised you, though, that after last week's rant that I would be back this week with something practical. Because, of course, we are here to help you with your skills. And uh, this afternoon, like when I'm done this, I'm jumping in the car and going to a photo shoot that I'm leading. And so I thought that this week on the pod, so I guess I keep calling it a podcast because I host a podcast called Word Made Digital. And I'm in that flow today. I've been doing a bunch of podcast stuff. This week on the video based show that you're seeing me on, um, first of all, say hey, tell me where you're from. Uh, the topic of the day is all about how to run a photo shoot for non photographers because I'm heading right now into a photo shoot and uh, it's on my mind and I thought hey you know I've learned some stuff over the years uh, I certainly am not a photographer myself I dabble you know I got that iPhone 11 Pro and I got uh, I got a Canon DSLR camera that I'm learning to use more and more, but I'm certainly not a professional photographer. But there are things that I've learned that I think could help you if you are not a professional photographer, but you need to do visuals. Uh, you're going to be part of a photo shoot. A lot of people, if you're a communications director or lead at a church, you're going to be part of this. And a lot of it you kind of learn through trial and error if you weren't already a photographer. Um, so just want to bring you through a couple things today as some principles about how to run the photo shoot. In general, I think this is true about anything we do as communications people. Preparedness matters, right? We want to be as prepared as possible uh, before we go into it so that uh, when we get there, we're going to be more successful. We're going to be less frustrated. And also, um, often a photo shoot is dealing with like lots of dynamics. You're talking about a photographer or maybe multiple photographers. You're talking about a subject or often even multiple subjects. You're talking about dealing with weather, light changes, you know, I mean, as the sun goes down or maybe you're dealing with an internal, like an in-studio shoot, you're dealing with lighting, you're dealing with, you know, just competing stuff that's all going on at the same time. And so when you enter that environment, that isn't the time to start figuring out what you want. You want to figure out what to do on the photo shoot in advance of the photo shoot. And everybody who goes to the shoot should have some sort of a brief. Brief is fancy way of just saying like write down on paper what people are going to do and what you expect them to be part of, what their job or role is in the room, and what kind of outcome you're looking for. It can be as simple as that um, so that when people come, they actually know what their job is and what if they've been successful, what we're trying to achieve. Um, so preparation is just so key. One of the things that you want to think about in any shoot is a shot list. Uh, a shot list is literally just a list of all the shots that you want to get. And so that can be as detailed or not specific as possible. But of course, the more detailed you are about the shots that you're looking for, the more likely you are to actually get the shot that you need. Um, and so you want to have that list and create that list with uh, the photographer. So whether you're like, if you're leading it from a visual perspective, you're the communications person, you know what you need to achieve in this shoot. You're doing it. I don't know, family photo shoot stuff for your website, for the church, or I don't know, an event, uh, or even just a, a Sunday church thing. Um, if you're meeting on Sundays and want to do shots of Sundays, um, as opposed to like a more formal studio shoot, which I'll be doing today. You want to have a list of the photos you want and even better if you can have samples of those photos for the photographer. So well in advance as you prepare, build like a Pinterest board. It can be a Google Drive with a bunch of photos. Go on Unsplash or other places on the internet and find photos like the thing you're trying to achieve. So in the case of what I'm doing today, we're doing a bunch of headshots for somebody. And so I was finding photos of like a woman sitting at a desk with her laptop. 
Um, a woman holding her phone. Like these are, are shots I found on the internet, but these are the kinds of things I'm trying to capture of her. So I created a big pile of these sample photos um, and also the kind of headshots too, because with headshots, you can have very serious ones. You can have ones that feel like more masculine or ones that are more feminine. You can have some that feel more outdoorsy. You can have ones that feel very intense. Like there's so many ways you can shoot a headshot. And so um, before you meet with the photographer in person in the room for the photos, you want to have already showed them the kind of look and feel that you're going for. Now that said, every photographer has their own look and feel, their own artistic style. And so the person you're bringing on will bring that with them no matter what the style is that you're going for. So hopefully you found a match in advance that you kind of know the style of the photographer that you've brought on, paid or volunteer, and you've shown them the kinds of photos you're hoping to achieve. And then um, everyone who's part of it has got a list of you know where to show up, what time to show up, um, where to park at that place. These are details that like not everybody's gonna know. Um, and uh, you want everyone to understand what their job is. List everybody who will be there by name and say who they are and what their job is. One of the reasons that I do that is because often the subject of a photo shoot is nervous or uncomfortable. And it's weird, right, getting your photo taken. Does anybody, can anybody relate to that? Anybody watching say like, ah, uh, yeah, getting my photo taken is uncomfortable? Well, it's super uncomfortable for most people. Um, uh, maybe if you're a professional model, it's less uncomfortable. For most of us, it's a bit weird to be the subject of a photo shoot. And so we wanna make people feel as comfortable and with as few surprises as possible. And that's where I would say everyone who was there, even if that person is like, they are here to learn as an intern, they're not gonna be doing anything. But just so that when the, when the subject enters the environment, they understand who's there, why they're there, and again, what everybody's job is. It's just gonna help everybody if everybody knows who everybody is and what their job is in advance. Okay, so um, let's talk about clothes, hair, and makeup. Um, depending on the photo shoot, um, you might want to think about hair and makeup and hair and makeup can be very, very simple. Um, it doesn't have to be like a professional hair and makeup kind of thing, but you do want to give maybe some directives in advance about what you're looking for, like a ton or very natural if it's on women. Um, and even for guys, depending on the environment, sometimes they get very shiny, like especially a bald guy, if he, uh, he can get really shiny on the head. So you might even just want a little bit of powder just to uh, soften that. You can bring that if you're prepared um, and, you know, buy it for five bucks at the drugstore. Um, and, and in terms of clothes, it's often one of the big ones. I would say at any photo shoot, ask the subject to give them a guide of the few things that you're looking for, whether that's certain colors or certain styles that you're looking for. And you can give them samples too. If you have photos, that's awesome. But I mean, ultimately, they're probably not gonna go out and buy a ton of stuff. So what you could say is bring a bunch of options and then plan in the timeline of the photo shoot that you're gonna help them choose what to wear. because. A, it makes people feel better when they're affirmed. They're like, oh yeah, you look great in that. Definitely, that's the jacket to wear for this. But B, um, sometimes people only bring one thing and it isn't right. Like maybe it's something that has too many tiny details on it um, that just like look bad in photos. So you want like plain stuff. You'd love some like, I, don't, I mean, it depends on how formal it is. Is it suits and ties? Is it leather jackets? You know, I don't know what you're going for in your shoot, but have people bring a few options. Um, even if it's a suit thing, bring a few tie options so that um, you can help them pick the ones that would look best on them, but also best for camera. Because sometimes the stuff that looks best on us in person isn't the stuff that translates, uh, that doesn't translate as well to uh, on, on film. And so um, would definitely say have people bring a few options, but show them in advance some pictures of the kinds of things that you're looking for. So they can bring stuff that will make them feel great look great and feel less nervous and prepared in advance. Um, okay, location, location, location. That's my next point on this. Um, location matters. You want to think about, uh, you want to think about not the time of day that you're shooting, but you want, you want to think about, um, you know, what's happening around it. Is this a place that's going to have, like if this is an outdoor shoot, like right now at this time of year where I live, there's like, wasps everywhere it's like wasp crazy season and so you want to think about like is this a place that we can shoot without being stung by wasps <laughs> or, or is this a place that we're allowed to shoot there are some places we have in mind 
um, that we would want to confirm in advance that we can actually get there. There's nothing worse than showing up in a place with like 10 people. I've done this before and I've been at a greenhouse where I thought we could do some shoots for a women's event and it turned out that we weren't allowed to shoot there. So after like five photos, we had to, we were kicked out. We had to leave and uh, we hadn't planned ahead. And so that meant I had like 15 people who uh, we had to quickly find a new solution for on the spot. You can avoid that if you did your work in advance and you can find out if the location is available, you're allowed to shoot there. You also wanna think about weather stuff, like what happens if it rains? Is there an alternative day or is there an alternative option? Now, that said, Let's talk about indoor shoots. Um, certainly as we go more into the fall, winter, I mean fall more, but definitely the winter, we shoot a lot more inside, but also in, indoor stuff can be great. We wanna get shots around a kitchen table with, or we wanna do living room feeling with a small group for Bible study or whatever it is. Um, in every city, there are places that you can rent as studio spaces. Um, there's this website that I use called thisopenspace.com, thisopenspace.com. And it has a lot of cities uh, in North America on it, and you can find studio spaces to rent and to use for uh, your shoot. You can see all the pictures of it. It's kind of like Airbnb, but for studio space. And often those studios come with, you know, like some lighting gear, some various equipment. They have a number of scenes. Maybe there's like a living room scene here and like, a, I don't know, a cool kitchen scene. There's a, a cool like a white loft space uh, there's like lo lots of different options depending on what you're looking for you can browse through you can also use airbnb itself i said this open space is like airbnb well why not use airbnb sometimes if you're trying to capture something um, you don't have a place available readily to you that has a uh, good natural lighting or just like nice furniture that isn't gross and beaten up um, or just you know not the right environment that you're looking for and especially during covid 19 um, in a place where maybe you would have gone and shot in like a coffee shop or things like that. A lot of that stuff isn't available to us anymore. Um, and so renting a private space ensures health and safety, but also ensures that you will be able to shoot there because you rented and paid for it. A lot of those spaces too will come with like paper backdrops, you know, the white, black, green, purple, red, I don't know, different places have different colors, but you can pull down the thing and get really nice headshots or really just like simple photos in terms of non-busy backgrounds with professional backdrops. Um, so anywhere you can look, like look in your own hometown, do some quick Googling, you can find some studios for rent, photography studios for rent. Um, and if not, Airbnb is a great secondary option. You can sometimes contact them directly and say, I only need this place for three hours. I don't need to, to sleep overnight. I'm not gonna you know, get the sheets all dirty. You don't have to do laundry kind of a thing. We just wanna take some photos. Um, sometimes you can do a private deal and make an arrangement with the Airbnb for a discounted price if you're just using it for a few hours during the day. Um, okay, next thing on the list, uh, the people needed. I kind of already said that with the people needed, you wanna think about giving everybody a job. There's nobody at a photo shoot who doesn't have a job because they're gonna be distracting, bothersome, make people more nervous that there's more of a crowd or an audience watching them in the photo shoot. We only want people at a photo shoot who have a job. But that said, there can be lots of jobs. Um, one of the things that I think makes a photo shoot more likely to be unsuccessful is if all you have is a photographer and a subject. Uh, the photographer then is responsible for does, is their hair flying away in a weird way? They're responsible for, is the lighting right? They're responsible for, is the technical stuff right? They're responsible for, is the framing of the image right? They're responsible for just thinking through the shot list and all the things that they were supposed to get. It's like too much for one person. And the subject is feeling more stress, the photographer's feeling more stress. Definitely at least at any photo shoot have one additional person beyond the subjects and the photographers. You wanna have somebody who has the shot list in their hand or you know on their phone on a list you want to have someone who's looking and thinking for weird clothing you know crumply issues or hair that's up to the side that needs to just be like wet down or you know fixed a little bit uh we want somebody who's looking at what the framing looks like but also are we getting the shots and then wow that's all so they look great you've got them in the shot now the photographer's going click click what that same person can do that that additional person can do now is go find the next shot so maybe you're shooting in a studio or a home or on the streets whatever wherever you are they're shooting uh, the photographer is busy just getting the shot that they need 
Meanwhile, the additional person can go scope out where's the next shot, move some furniture around, because if it's photography, not video, they can make noise. So they're dragging the furniture around to set up the next thing. Basically, you can have a, one or two extra people who are there to assist in all kinds of ways. The photographer will be less successful if they are the only person at the shoot. Giving assistance is not about the photographer being a diva or anything like that. It's that uh, there's just way too many things for the photographer to think about and you want them to focus on getting the right shot from a technical perspective, a framing perspective, a lighting perspective. You don't want them worrying about if they have enough batteries and also if there's flyaway hairs and also where are we going to go next after we get the shot. It's too much. And so that would, and also I think then the subject feels the stress of that. So you want to have people there, enough people to do the jobs, but not so many people that not everybody has a job. We don't want spectators at a photo shoot. It just makes everybody nervous and stressed out. Now that said, um, with a nervous and stressed out, make a photo shoot fun. Think about some things that would make it fun and put everybody at ease. Fun can mean you throw on a Spotify playlist in the background so it's not like dead silence when they're getting their photo taken and you bought donuts or something. Maybe not something messy or maybe like just a fruit tray so that and like some toothpicks so that people can eat between, uh, they can have a cup of coffee. Maybe you want to bring some coffee or some cold drinks if it's a hot day. Think of some snacks and some drinks because even if it's just like an hour, it's nice to have some some light refreshments that aren't going to be messy crumbs or messy on the face um, if someone's wearing makeup or lipstick something maybe like a you know a piece of fruit on a toothpick they can eat without it getting all over their face uh, it's also just a great way to practice hospitality but you can also just have a better time together everybody's happier when they have a snack am i right i think i'm right uh yeah and you know making it fun like Communication makes it fun. <laughs> I know we're in a church communications group, but if you communicate and then over communicate and give clear expectations in advance, people are less stressed and feel more like they're having fun. You want to encourage people, you know, when people are getting their photo taken, they are often nervous, as we've said, or they feel a bit funny or insecure. It's just a normal thing. It's weird having a camera pointed at you. And so people who, um, maybe there's someone there um, on the team who's specifically and intentionally trying to encourage, not over the top, but just like, yeah, you look great. Oh yeah, that jacket looks so good on you. You know, just trying to encourage them, trying to say, oh yeah, we got a really good shot. Maybe if you get a really fantastic shot, you'd want to show it to them, show them the screen so they know that it's going well uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> Don't forget the snacks, make it fun. And, and one of the last things I'd want to mention just on the, the administrative side is clear um, clear outcomes and deadlines for the photographer. One of the things that photographers don't think about that a communications director has to think about is the use case for the photos. So as a communications director, I want as many use cases as possible out of one photo shoot. I'm trying to get the most money I can, or sorry, the most bang for buck that I can. I'm usually paying a photographer, so I want to get the most I can out of that time from them, but also the most variety of shots that I can use for like a long time to come. So one of the things that I often is forgotten that graphic designers and church communications people always want, but photographers don't think about, is shots that are framed for digital media. Shots that are framed for social media, for web, for print thing. And what I mean by that is a photographer is thinking about framing the person. You know, they want a, like a classic headshot where it like kind of like me on the screen right now, you know, I'm in the center, you know, there's, there's not a ton around, not a ton of space around me. This is the shot that they're thinking about. But as a communications person, a graphic designer, what you're thinking about is how you're going to use the photo. And often what that means is you want the subject way on the side because over here, you're thinking about text. You're going to have a thing over here that says, you know, welcome to my website. Or you're going to have a thing over here that says like the time that the event starts or I don't know, whatever it is. You want to have space options around some of your photos for text. It's a lot easier. You can, you know, if I'm over here, you can crop out all that stuff later if you want. But if it doesn't exist in the first place, it's a lot harder to add back space into the photo uh, add white space, add empty space into a photo that didn't exist in the first place. So helping the photographer understand the purpose, the goal, the outcome that you're having for the, for the photos. And maybe it's many outcomes. You know, we want headshots, but we're going to take the headshot and then we're going to take that exact same shot uh, wide. And we're going to take that exact same shot with space on the left and that exact same spot 
space on the right and space above or space below or whatever that means. Um, you want to be thinking about stuff that can be used in as many ways as possible uh, to have, make the most out of your shoot. And then with that, another thing that you want to clearly communicate with your photographer, which I find is often a challenge with photographers that I work with. Shout out to all my photographer friends. A lot of you have a lot of work. You love the shoot. Uh, you love the shoot day. It's really fun. But the editing and the, and the administration and the getting the photos back to the person who needs them, the communications director or the lead on the project, that takes a lot of effort, sometimes some teeth pulling, sometimes like, please, please get me my photos, please, those photos you took a week ago, a month ago, six months ago, we haven't seen them. So before you uh, even start the project, make it very clear and reasonable what your timeline is for outcomes. Maybe you're like, we need your 10 favorite shots in the next three days. Uh, and we need all the photos edited or raw or whatever it is that you're looking for by X date, you know, two weeks later. It depends what you need. Um, but make that really clear and then help them remember that deadline. Uh, tell, so they've committed to it in advance. They know it in advance. But then along the way, you may need to help encourage them to remember that deadline. I find just... Um, a lot of us, right? We struggle with deadlines, but especially when like the fun of the shoot is over and then everyone moves on with their life and you're still waiting for the photos, but you haven't gotten them yet. And so I encourage you to just, again, over communicate, be as clear as you can. So we covered in this, I mean, if you're just jumping on now, we talked about preparation and the shot list and a brief that everybody knows. We talked about giving everybody a job and if you don't have a job, you're not invited. We talked about thinking about clothes and hair and makeup. We talked about locations and what you want to look for in a location. Um, we talked about the people that are needed, some of the people that can make the shoot better. We talked about making it fun and bringing food and snacks to every photo shoot. And uh, we talked about deadlines and being clear with the photographer, the kinds of shots and the kinds of framing you're looking for, depending on what the project and purpose is. Okay, my friends, I hope that was helpful to you. I am off now to go do a photo shoot. Uh, I got change. I'm going to change into something that can get a little dirty and sweaty. Maybe that's another tip. Um, often at a photo shoot, you want to wear comfy shoes and stuff that you can climb a ladder, drag a piece of furniture around, get sweaty if you're outside in the sun, maybe tie your hair back if you're a, woman or a man or a woman with longer hair and it's blowing in the wind. I don't know, whatever that is, uh, you want to get ready. And so I got to go get ready right now because I'm going into a photo shoot with um, some clients and I want it to be really successful. So I'm going to take my own advice uh and get ready if you have any other questions about photo shoots for non-photographers would love to chat with you i've definitely made a lot of uh, the mistakes along the way which is why i come with this kind of advice uh, god bless you as you continue to communicate the best news in the world what you're doing matters so much and photography is just another way to help us communicate and tell a story of how good Jesus is and how he is the best news in the world. See you next week, everybody. Bye.